So, we got these questions that are impossible for Christians to answer. Yeah, another round of these things. And, you know, uh, I'll answer a couple of them. Uh, let me just say from the outset, I do not know you. You label yourself as a street epistemologist. I do not know you. But in the future, when you are asking questions of people who have differing worldviews from yourself, you should play your cards a little closer to the vest. Uh, it's a little too obvious. Yeah, you don't think Christianity is true. I get that. But it's a little too obvious in your line of questioning. The questions are kind of leading the witness, trying to prove your point by the way you ask the question. And I'm not the only one who noticed that they're, I won't go so far as to call them obnoxious, but they're slightly, uh, yeah, okay, fine, they're slightly obnoxious. You know, I'm not the only person who said this. Matter of fact, I'm the one who probably cares about it the least of my co-religionists, but they definitely notice. Think of it this way. Um, now, I you probably know Anthony Magnabosco. I haven't watched very many of his videos, but I sincerely doubt he does this. Um, I've only watched a few of his videos, and I haven't watched them all the way through, but I'd be really surprised if he takes this approach because it gets annoying really quickly. Um, you, the questions are too obviously trying to lead me to a conclusion that you have already established in your mind. Think of it this way. If I said, I got some really challenging questions for atheists. You said, okay, shoot. And I said, um, if science proved tomorrow that atheism was completely ridiculous, would you give up atheism? If I said that with a straight face, do you not recognize, if, would you not recognize immediately that I was being sub, slightly obtuse? that I was asking a question trying to prove a point to you. So that's kind of the problem with the way you ask the questions. But having said that, let's throw that aside and I'll answer a couple. Uh, off the top of my head, what were the questions again? There was the one, if you were a Hindu, do you think you would be convinced of the prophecies of the Koran? No, I do not. Uh, why is that? Because they're not very convincing. <laughs> because they're not very convincing, so I wouldn't be convinced. Now, what I think you're getting at, again, based on the label street epistemologist, this is one of the constants in street epistemology, is that for some reason this is radically game-changingly important to the street epistemologist that I, the practicing Christian, am somehow really deeply challenged by the fact that there are people in other parts of the globe that practice different types of faiths and they believe it just as fervently as I do. For some reason that is, for some mysterious reason, they think that should be radically important to me and it should really wake me up to the fact that I'm deluded or wrong. Uh, a better way of asking this question was asked by the non-sex over the summer. Uh, so let me steal man your question for you because this gets more to the root of the question. If you, Craig, were in a mosque and, you know, you had a powerfully convincing experience of Allah, would you become a Muslim? Yeah, probably. But here's why the question is irrelevant. Because it didn't happen. I'm not. And yes, I probably would become a Muslim. But it's not what happened. I had a powerfully convincing experience of by the conviction from the Holy Spirit of God right down the street here in Southern California. So I became a practicing Christian. Now, irrespective of whether you believe that religious experience is real or not, the fact that there are other people in the world equally convinced of religious experiences that are opposite to mine doesn't say anything about the truth or falsity of what I practice at all. At all. It's kind of like you're an atheist, right? So I'm going to just go out on a limb and assume that you're a little gay for science because every atheist I've ever known is gay for science. So you're really, really into scientific realities and scientific truths, right? Okay. You've studied your scientific truths. If you were raised in a hut in East Namibia, would you know those truths and you weren't well educated? Would you know those truths as true? No. Does it negate those truths? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't affect the reality of the scientific truths at all. So the question you should be asking yourself, is there anything real to the faith I practice at all? And if you sit with me for two hours or three hours, you'll start to find out conclusively, pretty obviously, that there's at least some reality to what I practice, at least some truth in it. And not coincidentally, there are some truths in other religious faiths. 
No, not the whole truths. So if, the, if you want to further the question as to why do some people believe X about God, if God is, if God is real, why are there contradictory opinions about God? Well, scientific, re scientific facts are real and there are contradictory opinions about them. And yes, we can test and objectively verify them up to a point, but we are limited by our knowledge, are we not? Yes, we are. When it comes to God, same idea. The Bible says, now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. In other words, even I, your fully committed, fully practicing religitard, only see through a glass darkly. I'm only getting inklings, inklings of God. I'm getting impulses of the reality of God. Picture if God were a, a, um, a radio broadcasting on a radio frequency, then there would be some people who were better equipped to tune into that frequency and some people who were less equipped. And the Bible is clear about that. There are people ordained and anointed of God with more talents to hear his voice more clearly. They are called the prophets. And there are people with lesser ability to do so. Then there are choices you make in your daily life which dramatically impede your ability to hear from that to hear that radio frequency. If you start with the idea that the radio frequency doesn't exist at all, guess what? Your ability to hear is going to be dramatically limited. If you want to know that there is truth in what I do, you've got to start from a place of maybe. You've got to start from maybe and then listen to the answers. Listen to the answers and then listen for yourself to the voice of God. Because that, that explains all the cacophony of voices out there in the religious world. For different reasons, people, if, let's say that, let's just say for argument's sake that I'm telling you the God's honest truth, that the Holy Spirit of God has witnessed to me the actual substantive living God. Now there's a, someone born in, in India, born into a completely different religious tradition. They want to hear from God too, but the only tools they have are their religious tradition. They may be very talented. They may have all of the talent and the skills to hear from God clearly, but they are born into a tradition that points them away from the actual God. That would, that right there would explain the cacophony of, diff, of voices. Right there. You are born in just, just as if you born here, you know scientific facts by virtue of how you were raised. How you were raised and how you were educated. Somebody else raised differently educated differently would perceive the the object of reality differently so uh as far as i'm concerned that explains it but you know i'll let you decide that for yourself that's all amen